Okay, so my name's Austin. Um, I'm working on the facilitation team here and some of the medics, medics, and I was at the General Assembly last night where we talked a lot about the financial stuff that's going on with Occupy Portland. Um, and essentially there was a big uproar the night before at the, at the previous GA about whether or not um, the financial committee had sort of gone rogue and taken the money from uh, the, the general fund for our movement and transferred it into a nonprofit corporation, a 501c4. Uh, from, to my knowledge, it's 501c4 that they started to form. There was the uh, the registration for the business was on the Secretary of State's website, and as part of the process of initiating the 501c4, what they'd done was transfer the domain registration from the person uh, who held the domain registration to the corporation Occupy Portland Inc. So they did this without letting anybody in the General Assembly know, without letting the broader community know, and so it was discovered by the media team when the media team went to uh, went to find out, or were trying to do something and found out that the email addresses that were associated with the domain weren't working and the domain wasn't routing correctly. And so they came to the General Assembly, made the announcement that they had figured out that uh, a nonprofit had been formed or at least initiated uh, in our in the name of our movement, and the financial committee had done this sort of without any sort of oversight by the by the community at large. Um, when you said that they they um, redid the emails and the domain re-registered. Re um, who was that affecting? Well, it, it affected the media team because there were emails that, that they couldn't access be, that were associated with the domain, and um, and so they were confused. And I, I'm not, I can't speak totally to what the, the media issues were. I know that since then, everything related with the website has been fixed, and the media team is saying that it, it's all been resolved on their end. Um, I think the main question at this point is the the domain was purchased by Occupy Portland Inc. from the individual who originally purchased or, or, or registered the domain um, for $500, and I think there's some question as to where that money came from, although the financial committee has said it hasn't come out of the occupation fund. Um, and yeah, so the, the website's completely back in order. There was a question about where the fund went and whether or not that money had been removed and, and displaced and where it was, whether they'd taken it. Um, so last night at the GA, one of the people from the financial committee came to answer questions and said that, you know, had showed other people the PayPal account to show that the money still in the PayPal account, um, had discussed why they wanted to form the, a legal entity in which to place the money as opposed to having it in an individual PayPal account or in, you know, a, a bank account. And, and the main reason was that, that we're having enough donations at this ad. Um, he doesn't want to pay taxes on it, the person who is, who is actually charging the money. So the, the main, the upshot of last night's GA was that most people are not happy with the formation of a 501c4 for a lot of reasons, uh, for because it will necessitate the formation of a board of direct uh, directors, because it will, um, you know, essentially consolidate a lot of the power over over the money of the movement and um, and also consolidate the name of the movement to an entity, a legal entity um, that actually, in some ways, reflects the kinds of legal entities that we are here as a movement to oppose and and oppose corporate power and all those kinds of things. So. Um, uh, what we discussed at the GA last night, we had a little breakout group and people talked to talk little breakout groups about, you know, what kinds of things we wanted to do about what had been done already, you know, ideas for forming different kinds of legal entities, ideas for what can we do with the money that doesn't involve leaving it where it is so we can, we can move it into the kind of uh, place that we're entrusted on behalf of. Um, and what kind, you know, what kinds of things can we do as far as making that happen? Um, and so far, all that's been all that's been suggested is that we need, you know, we need to continue to flesh out the issue, find out more specifics about what's going on, um, talk to the people who've been handling the money more. Um, transparency with the finance committee has been a big issue. There's a lot that of has been an issue, and and I, I wonder, and I still kind of have a question in my mind: how just how transparent is this committee? How how transparent have they been with the donations? 
It, it just, it, depending on different individuals, you'll get a different response from the finance committee. So the person that came and spoke at the GA last night was very forthcoming. He answered all kinds of people's questions. Uh, Who was that? Uh, it was Brian. I don't know his last name. Uh -huh. um, and, and you know, from my own personal perspective, he seemed like he was doing his best to be honest and transparent. But there have been issues at the GAs with finance committee individuals. They, they a lot of times aren't present when finance issues are coming up, even when they've been asked to be present. And then we've also had some amount of disruption from members of the finance committee who will yell stuff out during the, the assemblies, but then when they're asked to get on stack to make a statement, they won't stay around. So it's been really difficult to actually try and get them together and understand on, on you know, uh, an individual basis who is sort of operating in, in a, a way that is questionable and who is being forthcoming. Because, I mean, overall, I think they're, they're maintaining that they're operating in good faith and, you know, generally speaking, I think most people want to believe them and feel like that's true, but there are a lot of questions that have come up because of the way they've handled themselves so far. Um, is it true that they've hired attorneys, some of them? I'm not, I can't, I can't speak to the absolute truth of that. From what I understand um, and what's been going around is that there has been somewhere like between $1,500 and $1,800 that was spent from the fund to uh, to get to consult with uh, uh, a, a probate attorney or someone who knows about these different kinds of legal entities. But was that profit. for a personal user or was it for someone that actually got arrested through well, the movement? Well, it's, it's with regards to the formation of a legal entity in which to put our, our collective fund. So it on some level has to do with the tax issue for the person who's in charge of the money right now. Um, and him not wanting to be liable for the money uh, in terms of taxes. Um, so it's not it's not it's not personal use exactly, but it's also not you know not totally on behalf of the movement necessarily. Because part of the reason this whole thing happened is, is because he didn't want to actually have any liability in terms of our funds. You know. So, so what's the status right now of that many in the whole process well, of the donations and that whole? I believe two nights ago. A, a proposal was passed at the General Assembly to um, essentially create a, a structure of oversight over through the GA over the Financial Committee. So there will be structured time for the Financial Committee to address the General Assembly. There will be an expectation on the Financial Committee to come to specific meetings. The, finan uh, the General Assembly will actually be able to mandate the Financial Committee be present and speak to certain things. Um, there's also been the initiation of a spending committee, which will have more authority over over the actual distribution of funds as opposed to and the finance committee will be more in charge of, of fundraising and actually actually accruing funds. So we're we're trying to split up some of that power with regards to managing the finances. Um, and then the other the other oversight thing that that uh, that we voted on the other night. And there were some other other parts of the finance committee proposal that, that was up the other night. But um, the the other piece was that the General Assembly would be able to elect or remove officials from the Finance Committee, um, essentially just granting granting official power over the Finance Committee from the General Assembly to, to mandate that they that they come to us for uh, big decisions regarding movement and, and movement finances. So, all right. Well, thank you. No problem. Thank you. All right.